Oh, motherfucking hell yeah. Hello and welcome. Welcome to One by One. It's been a while. It's been a while. I mean, how many times am I going to say that on a fucking podcast in the beginning? You know, like how many breaks am I going to fucking take? I don't know. I think the cat needs to get in to go to the bathroom. Hold on one second. So, so what's been going on, people? It's, I think the last uh, podcast I did was with Micah Hatcher from High Mighty Hikes back in like November. I mean, Jesus, what am I doing? It's Janu- January, almost February. But uh, yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> it's been a busy past couple months. The baby's almost seven and a half months old, man. Time is flying by. He's getting so big. And uh, it's been fun. It's been hard at times, but it's been fun. I love it. I love being a dad. And uh, I just can't wait to watch him grow up. It's it's pretty fucking incredible. But, um, yeah, so things have been going pretty fucking well over here. I'm uh, still doing the design stuff and still uh you know recording podcasts apparently (laughs) i can't stop man i can't stop can't stop making music can't stop doing this shit you know it's uh it's just what i like to do man so deal with it that for that song you heard was um i was talking to to the my guest tonight and we were talking about um programming music and like drum machines and stuff like that using uh, this program called reason and i put that on the front of the podcast just in case he felt like listening to it because uh we were talking about it and we're talking about recording like writing songs you know with guitars riffs first and then i asked him if he wrote songs with the drum track first since he programs his own drums for some of the, the music that he makes and uh, he said, yeah, so that one I did uh, drums first, like the whole entire song, and then recorded guitars and bass, and then my friend Mike Messina helped me out with some vocals on it. So um, that was called Between Dimensions. Hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, um, my guest today is a fucking awesome dude, and he contacted me on Instagram to, to go, you know, to be to let it be known that he was interested in you know being on the church what's happening now with Joey Diaz and Lee Syatt so you know send Joey a message message back it's actually I talk about it with him it's like for the first hookup that I that I helped Joey out with with was scheduling a podcast so it was really cool and then afterwards he I asked him and he agreed to be on mine through a Skype call so it was fucking cool as shit and he is an awesome dude you know he made me feel really comfortable and uh you know he had some cool fucking stories and I'd love to talk to him again I want to eventually go see the band and and you know hang out a little bit so it would be great but um and another thing he was just on the church this week but he forgot to talk about his new album that's coming out (laughs) He that he helped write and, and recorded with um, Al Jorgensen the new ministry album called Americant, and uh, <clears throat> you can just go on Facebook and in the ministry website I think it's ministry.com or something, and uh, and you can get the tour information on that. But that's coming out March 9th, and the tour starts I believe in the beginning of April, going around here in America for a little bit, and then over in Europe. So. Uh, it's fucking awesome, man. Please welcome one of the coolest dudes to ever play the guitar. The badass and the fucking super talented Mr. Sin Quarin of Ministry. Hello? Michael. 
Yo, Sin. Hey, man. Sorry about that. I hit the, hit the wrong button or something. Oh, it's no problem, man. I was, I, I started out and it was like, you know, I tried to do levels like as soon as I push the button and hear the Skype going ding, 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 ding. <laughs> ding. <laughs> so I'm just uh, getting levels here and I think we should be good. Cool, man. Cool. Thanks for taking the time, dude. It's, uh, it's a fucking honor. Seriously. No, my pleasure, man. I, I appreciate, uh, you know, your help in, in all of this. Hey, so. everything that I can do to help Joey and, and the music stuff, man, I'm all about it, dude. I've been, awesome. I've been into this shit forever, and, uh, you know, it was really cool to, like, see you contact me on Instagram and then have it go, because that was, like, the first hookup that I kind of, like, helped Joey out with, you know? And it was oh, awesome, cool that man. you, you know, went through that, because... I was looking at your like social media. You're not on Twitter, or no? No, I, I used to have a thing, dude. I, I mean, I'll be totally honest with you. I I'm really not big on any of that stuff. The only yeah. reason, reason I have it is because you know you have to have it nowadays to if you're doing you know any type of entertainment kind of thing. So I came on really late, you know, to all of those things. And um, there's a, I have a, a there's a Facebook artist page, and then there's. Um, there's an Instagram that I just came on to like not that long ago. And then I had a Twitter uh, page, but I just like, I closed that one because I honestly didn't even know what the hell I was doing. On the <laughs> I'm, I am like, dude, I am just retarded with that stuff, dude. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I can barely like send an email out. So <laughs> I'm horrible. It's like, I'm horrible with that type of technology and stuff like that. Hey, well, you made your way through, you know, the, the <laughs> yeah, interwebs well, to the church and, seats, you I, know? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't do pretty bad. It's, it's weird, dude. I remember because I'm like, I think you said you, I was, I was just listening to church. So I, I, and I read up on you, you know, for, yeah, for good measure. But um, you said you started with like ministry when you were 36. And I'm, yeah. it's like, it's, I'm in this, I'm not in the same boat. I'm not in a fucking band, but like, I'm just getting started with this stuff, you know, design yeah. and podcast stuff. And I'm 36 right now. So it's like, oh, cool. you know, it's, it's crazy to fucking it's, do that at like a different age. You know, you're like yeah, all of no, a sudden def- like, bam, let's do it again. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's never too late. And, um, you know, when you when you dig doing something, man. I mean, age it, it doesn't. It, you know, it might matter for certain things, but for this, it really doesn't. Man. Hell no, man. I, I never could see myself not playing music anymore because I've been playing since I was like fourteen. I got like, cool. what, do you, what do you play? I, I play guitar, and I, I learned. You know, I taught myself guitar mm, and cool. bass and and drums and stuff. So I, right. I record my own shit, and you know, it never really went anywhere. I had like stupid little bands in high school and you know i never I'm, it was weird it, I'm, it was, it was I'm like still I'm still in the stupid little band. <laughs> yeah fuck you <laughs> <laughs> hey, believe me the band might might not be little but it's still stupid <laughs> no get the hell out of here man and plus you're in like fucking like a plethora of bands <laughs> pretty yeah, much it's been, it's been a trip man yeah but yeah. um yeah you know it, i mean it's very it sounds very similar to to, to my my uh story as well i mean i started playing when i was about 10 but um my main instrument's always been the guitar but i also taught myself you know bass and drums and some keys and i played saxophone all through high school and stuff like oh, that shit. But, uh, that's awesome yeah you should bring I that was, shit uh, back <laughs> i know dude no kidding i believe it or not i was like uh in marching band and i was a total band geek and all that shit yeah yeah well sometimes that's how it starts out you're either like a band geek or you're like the you're like the rock and roll dudes that look at the band geeks like what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I was like morphed into one. <laughs> I was like, I was between both of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, do you like, cause I, one of the questions I had was, um, you do a lot of like the, the synths and the, and the, um, the program drums and shit like that too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's how you, cause I, I've been listening. I've been going back over because I got that fucking iTunes thing where it's like nine ninety nine a month, and you can listen to everything. So as soon as I yeah. heard that you're gonna, you know, you contact me, I, I've been listening to ministry and whatever you've been in <laughs> since I talked to you last week. But like, right on. 
you you can do that shit you you have like have you programmed shit for like uh like a ministry album or is that like is that something that al does because i was yeah, wondering if you have like live drummers and shit like who we do you know i like, mean i know you do but like it's crazy that you way, guys make that yeah. shit yourself yeah the way it works is is in the studio like i'll usually demo the songs that i'm working on you know for ministry or for whatever project i happen to be in but mainly ministry mm. um and I'll program, you know, drums and I'll, and I'll do, you know, like in my own little home studio, I'll, I'll track basically all the music. And then, um, you know, I'll take the song to Al and when we're tracking, when we're really going into the studio and then usually whatever engineer is working on the album, then programs like really does drum programming and uh, stuff like that. Gotcha. And some of my stuff might end up, because it has ended up on on the record as well, but it's usually, I mean, it's enhanced by you know these guys that are real, real you know programmers. I do it just to kind of get the point across when I'm demoing the the songs for ministry and stuff like that. Oh but gosh. but I mean a lot of the but a lot of the songs that that I've uh, that I've written the music for, um, you know the the some of the drum stuff I programmed has ended up on the record as well. They just add more to it and stuff yeah. like that. That's yeah. so fucking interesting to me, man. Because I, I never got into the programming stuff until, like, recently. Really, with technology, like, yeah. right. GarageBand on your iPhone, man. Right. I don't know if you fucked around with that, but it's incredible. I, <laughs> I haven't with I haven't with that, but you know, um, I use Reason. Yeah, um, I've, re I've used Reason 2.0 at one point. <laughs> yeah, 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 and it's, I mean, it's just amazing what you can do now, man. I mean, I'm, i am you know, uh, old school in, in the sense that um, when I was first demoing stuff, it was on, like, my Tascam four-track recorder, like, oh, yeah. with an actual cassette. You know, and I, and I, to be honest with you, man, I wish I could go back to that. Really? <laughs> like, yeah, because, it, because like, I'm telling you, man, I'm, I am so not good with technology. I've, <laughs> I, what, what I know how to do, I mean, it has just been out of necessity, um, not by, you know, by my own choice. It's just yeah. because it's like, I have to learn how to do this or else I'm basically just going to get left behind. Exactly, um, but dude. for me it was a lot easier to just you know break out my four track and just plug my guitar straight into the thing and that was it like that's yeah. all i had to do what now you... it's like you got an interface and you got the, the <laughs> computer and all that crap and i'm already like jesus i already i'm forgetting <laughs> the fuck riff that i was you know working on already <laughs> you know, just because i'm trying to get a stupid level here something's not working or or stuff like that so in that sense i wish i i could go back to those old days you know because it just for me for somebody that's not you know that computer you know literate i'm, I'm very computer illiterate um <laughs> you know it, it was easier for me back then um than to do all this stuff today but that being said it is really cool all the stuff that that now you know guys can do in, in you know in, in your own bedroom yeah. basically i mean sometimes just on your phone you could do an uh, entire fucking demo it's crazy dude i i'll send you something i i i made it yeah. on my phone an entire thing and i don't know how that's another thing i was going to ask you how do you write when you're using like the program drums and stuff because i've tried with reason and i got like you know a bunch of like rock metal songs with that kind of shit but yeah i would either have to like sit there and because obviously you have to pick a time a timing to use with your right because i would i would you know just let the metronome click go and then i'd right. think of a riff you know and then i play right. it record it and then i try to make drums to go over top of that have you ever made <laughs> it backwards though absolutely like, drums first yeah, a, a lot of times, man. Yeah, a lot of times, to be honest with you. I mean, I've done every type of variable you could think of. Yeah. I've done as far as writing. But um, a lot of the songs I write, I don't know why, for some reason, usually start off with drums. Um, yeah. I'll, and I'll write around that. And um, not always, but but it does happen quite a bit. And sometimes, like, it'll be just a drum loop that'll trigger an idea. Mm -hmm. So I'll have the loop going and then I'll start, you know, writing the riff around it. And then I'll eventually, you know, go back and start changing the drums and stuff like that. And sometimes, you know, as far as drums go, I'll sit there and literally like play on my, on my keyboard, you know, like kick, snare, hat, you know, and then, 
replace everything and program it that way. And then sometimes it's a combination of a loop and me sitting and actually playing a, a you know programming the drum beat and stuff so yeah, it's man. it's a combination of, of of a bunch of things it's never just one set formula it's whatever you know what whatever you, you make feeling work. at that moment <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah do you ever start off with like bass absolutely bass riff i wrote the, <laughs> yeah there's one song in particular i don't know if you're familiar with this band or revolting cox which is the other band that uh that um it's basically like ministry is like the main band mm-hmm. and al al jorgensen um has this side band called the revolting cox which was a, a, a real big sort of side project of his and um for that band i remember in 2007 i think i wrote um the music for uh, an album called sexo olympico yeah and opening track is a song called hooker bot 3000 yeah, I, I listened to and, that today. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> that's all. If you listen, if, if you listen, that's funny. If you listen to that tune, the open it starts off with a bass line, and that's how I wrote that song. Was I had this bass line in my head, oh, and that's I wrote the song around that bass line. So yeah, dude, it happened. Wow, it's it's so much fun, man. Like just doing that stuff on the side, like when you have an idea or like you know, absolutely, whenever it just hits you. It's, it's yeah. and it's cool. I would I would definitely recommend getting if you don't have an iPhone, get one just for the fucking garage band or like a new you know like have an on, iPad. Yeah, I have it on my Mac. I have it on my on my no, MacBook Pro. That's good too, and it's more intricate on there. But honestly, they just with this new update for the uh, iOS, they yeah. like you can do a lot of shit right on your phone. And there's a little adapter that you can plug your phone right into your guitar cable. So that's what I was. Like, that's what I was just gonna ask you. I was like, "How would yeah. you?" So there's like an interface, and yeah. you can literally what it goes into like the the headphone jack, and then uh, like the adapter into like a, your guitar cable right into that. Yep, exactly. It's called iRig. It's like forty bucks. Wow. But that's awesome. Yeah, man, it's great, and you can that's plug a, a bass right into it, and then there's drums yeah, on there so that I'm, you can program. It's crazy, dude. You could like literally be anywhere. You could be traveling. You could be in your hotel room. You could be anywhere, dude. I'm just, sitting in my car at lunch, you know, yeah. at my office building, <laughs> either making songs, making posters, or <laughs> whatever. Because I do the posters that's all on my so phone cool. too, man. It's crazy. Wow. Wow. Dude, that's that one, that, the 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 one that you did, the flyer tonight. <laughs> <was> so <cute. laughs> I was gonna attempt to put like piercings and like you know tattoos on Joey's face, but I was like, it might not that turn is, out great. <laughs> nah, dude, that looked killer. What you did, man. I, I love that flyer. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was. I don't know, dude. Sometimes, like, because that's what I I usually listen to the podcast and like, you know based off of maybe something funny they talk you guys talk about on there i'll like try to find a fucking weird picture and then put your faces yeah. on it but i just figure fuck it <laughs> yeah, dude, that was perfect put him on fucking Al's fit body yeah that's perfect <laughs> oh my god dude you should have seen fucking lee spitting up blood what dude when after you were at the that podcast guy? yeah dude what the hell so, happened? It, so it's on if you if you check on Joey's periscope yeah of that of that night like before the podcast you yeah. know he does like it's on there dude and you can unfortunately you don't see him spitting the blood but it happens while it's going on there so no you can shit joey talk about it and stuff like that so i'm sitting there like i just got there and i'm sitting on the couch not even on the chair yet and we're just kind of shooting the shit and joey's doing his thing on his on his periscope and um and he like packs his you know the bong and then he, he, <laughs> he and lee hits the the bong and he starts fucking coughing and he starts like spitting up just like like he's gonna throw up yeah. and then all of a sudden coughs and dude blood shoots out of his fucking mouth what? and it's like run dude and it's running down his like chin and stuff like that and i was like and i'm just sitting there dude and i'm like holy fuck dude this guy's gonna die right here in front of what us. the what fuck the- i didn't know dude, it, was it was like that man I, dude, it was fucking gnarly dude and so like eventually he, he, he the blood stopped and he was just kind of spitting up and 
Joey gave him like some some paper towels and he was just kind of cleaning himself up and and he was fine but it was just it was crazy dude dude i don't know what the fuck was in that bong <laughs> yeah I, <laughs> I don't know like based on like some of the stories joey tells i i wouldn't no. doubt that he would put something in there crazy but not something to yeah, make him cough no. like that yeah i know like well the thing is joey like had just done it right before him yeah like literally he he did it and then he passed it over to me joey's a fucking savage though dude i don't know how he's, he's not even human dude the shit <laughs> no would still you know stay fucking alive is fucking crazy. <laughs> i don't do the uh edible i know you said you you don't do anything really which yeah, is cool. never done anything. that's crazy i mean it's awesome so keep it up <laughs> don't fucking don't yeah. give in yet <laughs> Yeah, if I haven't at 48, dude, I don't think I'm going <laughs> to I don't know. Maybe on your deathbed, you should take a nice big puff of a, a fat yeah, joint maybe. or something. I well, love like, I'll, I'll start spitting up blood like Lee. Yeah, all of a sudden. <laughs> no, I, I, I saw, I don't really do the edibles that much, except for like, you know, once in a while, people will get them around here in Jersey and like, you know, they're from California and, you yeah. know, I'll eat them and I'll be like, uh don't really feel much <laughs> i don't know maybe it's because i smoke too much but i i went right. to see joey when he came to new york and uh him and dean del rey were doing a show and i fucking went yeah. down into the green room with him and joey hands me a bag of the stars like three yeah, of the yeah. purple ones the most fucking strong yeah. ones he's got and i'm like i'm like yeah i haven't smoked in a couple of days i ate the whole first star and then he sparked yeah. up a joint we smoked the whole thing and then he went on stage <laughs> dude i was like in the crowd like kind of just like just sitting there with a grin on my face like melting in a chair <laughs> and he's fine yeah and he's just like whatever yeah i don't it, know how the fuck like candy that's like that right there is like 25 years of fucking experience doing that shit just Big getting time. up and talking in front of people like that it's different like i mean i'm sure you you know the feeling maybe you you felt it more when you first started playing in front of people but like when i first started playing in front of people i was nervous as fuck man you know the funny thing is man is playing and being on stage i've never ever been nervous about that not even the very beginning like when i first started that's cool Um, yeah it's always i don't know man it, I, i've always felt way more comfortable and natural up there i'm more nervous in in like other situations and like other social settings and like shit social situations yeah, yeah yeah like if it's just like like if it's just like a handful of people in a room or something i'll be more like nervous about yeah, like, that like what do i say the, next what should exactly, i ask exactly exactly you know? yeah dude yeah, i used to be I'll, the same I'll, way in high school <laughs> yeah it continued yeah, but it, it got less but i mean I would yeah. used to think like, ah, uh, what should I fucking talk about when I go over to my friend's house? Yeah, you know, to keep them interested. You know, like right. nothing, man. Shut yeah. the fuck up and chill. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, it was. It's definitely more feelings like that, you know, than 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 ever having nerves like being on stage. Which, thank God, you know. And like, you've always had that rush too. <laughs> like, oh yeah, like man. Like getting on yeah. stage, I. Yeah, I haven't been on stage in a long time, like in an actual band. Because I, after I was done this metal band like ten years ago, I started playing like an acoustic thing with with a friend. So it was yeah. never the same feeling, you know what I mean? Gotcha. But uh, yeah, it's that stage feeling is awesome. Yeah, it's always pretty much been the same for me. I mean, you know, granted the 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 bigger the crowd, oftentimes the rush is just you know that much more intense like i could imagine when, like what you were saying yeah, poland 500,000 people yeah dude that <laughs> was fucking insane i mean the the funny thing is the first time i played like a big festival was like 2005 i think with my previous band we played the download festival in the uk and there were like 35,000 people there Damn. and and i remember like you know dude i'd never played to it. we had never played to a crowd like that and so i'm up on stage and doing that and and i remember thinking to myself wow you know i, I need to enjoy this because this is like never gonna happen to me again <laughs> and then like and that was 2005 and in 2008 i was already in ministry and i remember we were in serbia 
playing at the exit festival with the sex pistols what and that's fucking yeah awesome. and um and we went on stage and there were ninety thousand people and i remember like being on stage going fuck i need to enjoy this because this is never gonna happen again <laughs> <laughs> and then 2012 we we hit poland at the, the woodstock festival in poland and there's half a million people now i also i said the same thing there but i really doubt i'm gonna top the five hundred thousand people thing i don't think we're ever gonna play to a crowd that size again but yeah um, <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe a million the, and a half you know yeah i don't know man but the, the yeah the rush is, is pretty intense you know when when you're in front of that many people and, and you're just you can feel just the energy and that roar of the crowd that you know you just you you there there's no other place that you'll hear that unless you're in a setting like that fuck yeah man i mean i know just from being in a crowd watching yeah. bands you know that are like <laughs> maybe a thousand or two people that's yeah still a yeah, fucking that, lot man. you know yeah even that i mean and, and when we do shows you know to you know a couple thousand people or whatever it's still i mean the rush is still it's still the same it's still there yeah i remember the first like concert that i went to when i was like in high school first like metal show that i was like seriously impressed with was um when seven <laughs> dust came out with their album home i don't know if you're familiar with that guy yeah, that yeah dudes, of course. But, dude yeah th- th- i was it just was, th- was they that? were pretty intense and live too man yeah that's what i'm saying they were like the best fucking band i've i i seen up until that point and i was like jesus yeah, yeah. This is intense. And it was right after I got out of the band from high school. So I was like, you know, inspired to like write music and try to do the whole band thing. But yeah, just never fucking clicked. <laughs> well, it's not you're what? How old are you? You're what? 36? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's not too late. It's not too late. And hopefully no, that's what I'm going believe towards, me, man. I mean, believe me, if you know, I'm, I'm living proof if, if uh, somebody like me who was 36 and got into a band like this i mean it's definitely never too late yeah. you know i'd been in, granted i'd been playing since 18 you know out in the in hollywood and stuff like that and i think i got my first record deal when i was let me see it must have been i was probably like 29 wow. or 30 i got when i got my first record deal which some i mean to some people that's considered old like to get your first record deal you yeah. know what i mean because, mm-hmm. like like a lot of cats are are getting signed in like their early 20s and shit like that but Man. um but you know yeah it, it happened a little bit later for me but <clears throat> i'm kind of glad I, I went through all the the bullshit i went through and yeah you put your you know, time in I, you know yeah definitely i mean not that i want to go back to it but <laughs> i'm glad that uh I'm it glad happened that you know went yeah i'm glad it, it happened made and, you and the I person you went. are yeah, yeah, and and I appreciate everything that happens to me now, and and I don't take anything for granted. And I think sometimes when things happen too early, you just kind of you don't think about stuff like that, and you just kind of you know are expecting things, and that's definitely not not yeah. was for me. Yeah, so, you're especially in your early twenties. If it happens, like yeah, it's been proven you, it's, scientifically, your brain isn't fully fucking developed exactly. until then. So yeah, you know it's. Yeah. It's weird, man, and I, I f- I'm the same. Like, you know, it's not music, and it's different. But like with me and Joey, I feel lucky as shit for what I'm doing. I'm just some fucking asshole that yeah. works at a cubicle, you know, who who How loves you comedy. Know? You know? Joey, I fucking social media, dude. That's what's so crazy. Nice. Like, I uh, nice. he he came out with two a- albums ago. Savage Dad. He came out yeah. with. I uh I took the picture that he posted on Twitter and fucking messed with it and posted it back on there and he used it for the album cover. So <laughs> so after that like he was like you, you're awesome, the, you're man. the you're the uh, church graphic artist. I was like fucking A, man. So uh, since Killer. then, you know, I've been fucking working my ass off to try and do more than what I was doing cuz at the time when that happened, I was like just you know podcast listener i had been yeah. out of the band for a while so i wasn't really into the music i just started doing some design stuff on my computer yeah. and the phone and i was like fuck it man let me try and do this shit because i was at first you know how I, I do the photoshops but like 
yeah i i used to take i know a couple like local photographers like live <laughs> band photographers and mm -hmm. i would take their shots that they would do like they would go to like a fucking papa roach concert or some bullshit i would yeah. take each one of their best shots of each guys in the band and then cut them out and put them all on one thing and you know make like a collage kind of mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. from the live show so i was doing yeah. a lot of that shit for like bands like that and like cover bands around the area and stuff and just wasn't fucking catching on nobody was like really giving a shit so i was like fuck it i'm gonna try it for these dudes that i listen to every day and i love and uh right it just fucking worked dude and then rogan right started sharing shit and now i work with him that's too, cool and it's killer it's man. fucking awesome dude <laughs> yeah. I, I totally dig his show too man yeah dude that would be awesome to see on there he his show is killer yeah i'd love to that's one day be lucky enough to get on on his show too yeah he's he's such That'd an awesome dude so generous like joey was like yo does uh rogan pay you for what you do i was like not really i just make them and then he like reposts them you know i get a lot of followers from it which is fucking rad yeah. and like he just yeah, yeah. the fact that he reposts it, it's cool he's like sure. all right well he's gonna pay from now on <laughs> so i was like all right <laughs> so then after that he like contacted me a bunch and i made like most of uh his tour last year he had a it's called strange times yeah. tour i yeah, made yeah, most yeah. of those yeah. posters so oh wow that's cool man it's fucking awesome very cool yeah so i mean and that you know i i want to continue i'm i haven't stopped making music and shit but that's one cool. thing that i wanted to do with this one by one was like talked to musicians and shit around the world and whatever even if it's through skype know. you know <laughs> this is yeah no that's killer it's, it's kind of impersonal but i mean it's it's what i got right nah, now that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool what uh where, whereabouts in uh, jersey are you i'm in uh it's called Voorhees. it's like 25 minutes outside of like philadelphia oh right on like We're right over be, the bridge where are we gonna be in april like i know we're hitting <sighs> I don't know if we're hitting Jersey. We're hitting New York or Jersey, or we just did Philly um, in October, I think, or oh, November. Oh no, shit! Damn. Yeah, we played at the what's that place? Uh, Electric Factory or Electric Factory? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I love that place. We that. Yeah, we played that. Place. It was sold out. It was jam packed. That's awesome. That's uh, like one of the bigger ones around. Like they got Electric Factory, yeah. TLA, and yeah, uh, we, a did the, other we did the we did TLA in uh 2016 and 2015 and 2008 yeah and the uh, trocadero that's a classic one the truck yeah yeah we've yeah. done that place a bunch um but i'll i'll double check it and i'll and i'll send you where we're playing and you got to come out when we hit uh fuck yeah dude you know, that'd be awesome hit your neck of the woods man yeah yeah i'll have you come out and you know um i'll put you on my list and everything so sweet dude are you, are you yeah. on that new the new ministry album hell yeah i am fucking a dude i wasn't sure because like you didn't really talk about that that much on, on the church <laughs> <laughs> and like i've was, seen it all around but i've only seen that. l <laughs> i was just talking about that after i was like after i did it i was like you know what i didn't even talk about the <laughs> or tour or anything and um yeah i kind of spaced just because we were just having such a good time talking about whatever the fuck we were talking about that i didn't even like bother to, to talk about the new record yeah i um he's mesmerizing I helped, uh, dude <laughs> he's a trip dude i uh i wrote um um most of the tracks on the new album awesome and uh i usually write like the music part and um but with this album i mean we we a lot of the guys contributed but um Pretty much every track I, I I wrote some music for, so yeah, definitely all Sweet. over this record. And that's played, March 9th that comes out, right? March 9th, yeah, the new record comes out. It's called Americant, um, and then the tour starts March 23rd. Okay, cool. And going out for, I think it's like five weeks, and we have uh, this band called Chelsea Wolf opening for us. Sweet. Yeah, and then. Um, so the tour will take us till let me see in March till end of April I think something like that, and then July and August I think we go back to Europe for like five weeks or something like that. Nice. How 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 do you feel about Europe these days? <laughs> um, well, as far as uh, like touring and shit and like you know I, safety. I gotta, <laughs> well, 
Well, you know, last year when we were, were out there, we were out there in June. Um, the security was beefed up at a lot of the festivals that we were at, like, to, you know, things that we'd never seen before. Um, so, you know, it's it's kind of in the back of your mind now to where it really wasn't before. Now, um, it was kind of a trip that when we would get to like, you know, because we did like Hellfest and Download Festival and like all these huge festivals out there. And um, some of the uh, promoters would come up to us, you know, and when we would be backstage and they would just kind of be like, all right, guys, you know, just kind of know, you know, get familiar with exits and, you know, know your surroundings. And we we're like, holy fuck. Like, we've never had those conversations before, ever. <laughs> and so, you know what I mean? It's like now, it's it was definitely, especially because of the shit that, that had, you know, gone down. Um, it's definitely something that um, it's on people's, on people's minds out there. And it's something that they brought to our attention. So... You know, there's there's that, but as far as the shows and the and the crowds, they're great, man. The European festivals are always just amazing. And do you find um, that a lot of people like talk like when they talk to you like throughout the show and like afterwards, they're like talking to you in English or what? Like I always wondered English. that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Most of those countries also know how to speak English. Like wherever you are, you could be anywhere. We're so you know, fucking privileged. <laughs> this fucking yeah, asshole country. Like they, yeah, time. Um, they, for the most part, uh, pretty much every place we've gone to in Europe, and we and we've done like, I don't know, eighteen, twenty countries out there. Um, I mean, even in Russia, man. I mean, they they speak English to us, and um, yeah, and if they, you know, it's a, broken English or whatever, but they always they always do try to communicate in English. Yeah, I download your album before it come out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, those fuckers. They really Sounds do, great, man. man. <laughs> always, always steal our shit out there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. Um, I mean, it's a, it's it's always great playing those those big festivals in Europe. That's what most bands do is they go to Europe in the summer to do those those huge festivals. Yeah. Well, hopefully, one of those out there has fucking a million people out there yeah i know man so now we got a top half a million so you know at this point i'll take half a million and one yeah right just just to get there that's fucking say, crazy yeah. dude yeah. you went from uh, what did you say thir- ten thousand to thirty thousand to well, ninety thousand or whatever was yeah i went 35 90 and then half a million it's crazy and then it's, it's got to be such a fucking rush. I see if I if I imagine myself playing in front of that many people, I could imagine when I was 16, right? And my fucking friends in my band were like, "Hey, for his 16th birthday party, we're going to secretly talk to his mom and dad and get them to let us play our music at his house." So I had to play in front of like all my cousins and like family, <laughs> and I'm like you know, I'm a fucking teenager that's like, yeah, grow up and in, I'm into fucking Nirvana and like Alice in yeah. Chains and that kind of shit. So my family ain't trying to hear that shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I started out playing backwards, like fucking Jim Morrison style. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even, I couldn't even move, dude. I can't even imagine. But right. you know what? Like, we, my, one of my metal bands that I played in, we eventually played a couple shows at the TLA. It was like those shows that like, you have to like pit, sell a certain amount of tickets, and if you don't, you gotta yeah, like buy the rest yeah, yeah. and all that Bell bullshit. Shit and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay to play. Yeah. <laughs> but just to get on stage yeah. at a place like that, you know, yeah. and even though there wasn't as many people, it wasn't packed at all. But like, it was fucking badass, yeah, still, man. Yeah, still, it's 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 a rush and it's a cool thing, man. You know, it's not always uh, it's not always uh, some sold out huge venue but the but the rush is still there man just being up on those stages still gives you that that you know that gut feeling man and that and that high yeah man and it's it's weird recently i haven't really felt that often except um i do i do on the side too besides the day job and the design pocket all this i do uh live sound with one of my friends that like helped me start my podcast he has like Mm -hmm. uh all the equipment to do like you know pretty decent sized rooms just like the pa and you know mic and all the yeah. amps and drum, yep. guitars and instruments whatever so 
we do a lot of cover bands and uh it's like it's weird i, I get a rush from like doing the effects on the vocals now <laughs> you know like i don't i'm not playing but i still have yeah. that rush like oh yeah i fucking hit that delay on that fucking right you know barracuda right there <laughs> actually <laughs> yeah, and cool. it's so weird but i look over to my friend bob bob bowling and he's like give me a thumbs up and i'm like yes <laughs> <laughs> got it so ridiculous got That's that cool. shit yeah but yeah man That's i, I cool. could imagine dude well fucking hey dude thank you uh thanks for taking the time out man i really appreciate sure. it dude my pleasure my pleasure um and like i said i'll uh i'll keep you posted on when we hit over in uh, the east coast and uh you'll have to come by and hang dude i would love that and uh i can't wait dude seriously what's uh what's the website for the tour do you know uh i mean if you just go to the to the ministry facebook page um is it we are ministry or is it because i know that's the instagram i think it's just like official ministry okay if you just type in ministry you'll, you'll see it it's, cool. it's huge on, on on facebook and the the tour dates are on there and then i'm going to be posting the tour dates on my on my website as well so okay and your sin query sin music <laughs> at G, uh dot com and uh official sin yeah. Quirin and uh at facebook and sin yeah. Quirin music on uh, ig you should you should start up the twitter again because it really i mean you you know gotta stay away from crazies today today i i I started i I was looking at all the stuff and i was like god damn man i was like i never see the thing is i never really pushed that i never really did anything with it but like i start started to see all the action that was happening just from the joey's podcast and i was like it made me think twice Mm -hmm. it made me think like fuck i should probably you know get this back up again so i might bring that back cool man well it was a fucking pleasure dude I, and i was i was actually like looking you up and if you just hashtag your name you'll see all the fucking posts it's crazy yeah i know dude. I, never <laughs> did, dude. I was like holy fuck dude this shit's getting crazy i need to like have a page or something yeah up. dude seriously <laughs> yeah oh uh, that's cool man cool and uh I, yeah i'm gonna post this on my page and then i run uh i know you, you probably know but i run joey's instagram so like he lets me fucking yeah, yeah. share shit on there so i'll share this on there too and get out Please, the information please. about the album <laughs> yeah, yeah i <laughs> since i forgot to do that um yeah as soon as you got it up man just send it over and, and you know tag me or whatever and, and i'll i'll make sure I, I push it as well cool man i'll talk to you soon sir. all right man have a good one you too brother bye-bye bye